When I show people a wooden bowl, they always ask, how in the world did you do that? In this video, I'm going to show you the process to make a small wooden bowl. Stay right here. Hey, I really appreciate that you're here in the shop with me today. I'm getting kind of excited about this video because a lot of new wood turners want to know how to make a bowl. Let's be honest though, the process is a little bit intimidating. It doesn't have to be real intimidating though. If we just learn a few steps, it can be easy. So today we're going to make a small wooden bowl that can be useful around the house or in the kitchen. I'm Jason Geyser and this is Geyser Wood Turner. Let's make a small wooden bowl. First, I want to talk about the wood and the grain pattern. Now this is a two inch by four inch by four inch piece of cherry and the grain orientation is a little bit different than you typically see in spindle turning and let me illustrate that for you. I'll grab a marker here and if you can see these lines in the wood I'm just going to draw some of those out so we can see what's happening within our wood piece. We'll just draw across and you can see where those this isn't perfect but you can see where those lines are running in the piece of wood and this is typically called side grain orientation now you can do an end grain bowl but the hollowing technique is a little bit different but we're going to stick with the side grain because that's typically what we'll use when we're making a bowl so I want to illustrate what's happening inside this piece of wood as we're turning it but first I'll mark out the center by going from corner to corner and then the other corner to corner and putting a line there and then we'll get out the compass to draw a circle around the outside okay I'll just measure to the one side and I'll put an indentation in the center and then we'll just bring our pencil line around alright and just to mark that out for you I'll draw that in a little bit darker now I want you to imagine this piece of wood is spinning around and what's going to happen when we intersect those grain lines when we're making our cut here at the top we're spinning that way we're going with and down away from the grain this one we're coming up against the grain again with and down and cutting and here we're going against the grain it want to dig in more and on the inside it's opposite from that here I'm going with the grain against the grain I just want you to remember that you're always going to have those intersections and places where you're going to go against the grain when you're doing this side grain orientation on a block of wood that's one of the reasons why it's important to keep your tools sharp and to make small passes so that you don't get catches as you go against the grain in that piece of wood. Now we're going to mount this piece of wood with a woodworm screw onto our lathe. A lot of people will call it a screw chuck. It's the same thing. Basically we'll be putting this screw into our chuck and screwing the piece of wood onto the chuck until it's tight. Now all I have to do is drill a hole in our piece of wood and I've marked the depth with a piece of blue tape so that we don't go all the way through and have a hole in the bottom of our bowl. And you can also mount it using a face plate. Just use really strong screws, not drywall screws. Um, and make sure you don't go too deep to poke holes in the sides of your bowl. We'll go ahead and just drill that out. And we'll drill down till we get to the depth on our tape. And I'm going to an inch and three eighths, and this is an eight millimeter drill bit. Then all we have to do is mount the chuck onto the lathe. So just put that on, and then our woodworm screw goes right inside our chuck. And with mine, I usually pull out on it a little bit as I'm tightening up, just to make sure it's seated in the right position and it's square. I've made a quarter inch spacer to go on in front of my bowl blank and I'll just screw that on and that's because this screw is a little bit long for the size of hole that I needed for this particular piece of wood. You also notice that I've cut off the corners in a bandsaw and that's not necessary you can always do it with a tool. We'll just line that up and make sure it's straight as we screw it on and we're going to bring that all the way down until we hit that spacer and it's tight everything's tied up against our chuck.
Okay, now we're going to talk about our ball gouge and what we're going to use it here for. Okay, you'll see that there's a bevel here and there's some wings that come around and a ball gouge has a really deep flute on it that you can see in the center here. And that flute's going to be important for the work that we do. Okay, so we're ready to make our first cuts with the ball gouge. We'll turn on the lathe and bring it up to speed. And on a small bowl like this, I'm going somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 RPM. And what we're going to want to pay attention to as we're roughing this out or facing our piece and making it round is the direction of this bevel. You can see that the direction the bevel is pointed when I have it in this configuration is the direction that the cut is going to go in. So we want it straight across that face for right now. And we'll tilt that flute just a little over to the side just imagine if that flute was straight up and down and you had it on a clock face, it'd be at 12 o'clock. And if you tilt it over to about the 10 o'clock position, that's about where we want to be at. You can see that that bevel, as I cut into the piece of wood, is coming straight across. And I'll just take it off layer by layer, just like I do with a spindle roughing gouge, a little bit at a time to get that to where it's round. But this is a bowl project, so I don't want to get that spindle roughing gouge anywhere near a bowl because it's not designed for that. The next job we need to do is to create a tenon or a spigot on the end of this piece of wood so that we can eventually turn it around and flip it over and hollow out our bowl. And we'll have something to grab it with. So I'll grab some calipers and just kind of mark where I need to go. And then I'm just going to spin it around and kind of put a pencil line that's close to what I want and then we'll go ahead and cut that and I'm going to use the ball gouge for this you can use uh, a parting tool or something like that to cut this with um, but just to get a little more practice with the ball gouge we're going to do some cuts here and just the same kind of cut that we did before we're just going to take a little piece and then do it again and work our way down. And then I'll kind of pull back as I get to that edge so I don't get a catch. So I don't want to be cutting too deep of a material here. And we'll just cut down, cut down, and work our way down until we get to about the size of tenon that we need. The length of our tenon really only needs to be about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch, something like that. And uh, we really don't want it to bottom out at the bottom of our chuck jaws, but we do want it to kind of fit into the corner of our dovetail. So I'm going to bring out my skew chisel and we'll just cut a little corner here and make a dovetail on the end of our tenon so that it's not going to come out of there and it seats really well. Okay, so I'm going to bring out the bowl gouge and start to make some cuts and shape this bowl. And I notice it's kind of skipping around a little bit and I'm having a hard time keeping that angle on my bowl gouge that I need. So I'm going to bring my tool rest up a little bit. It's always good to change if you know that something's wrong. What I'm going to do is try a pull cut across here to rough out and shape this bowl into the shape that we want. And so I'm going to keep that flute over in that 10 o'clock, maybe even a little bit more position. And we're going to kind of cut on the wing, keeping that bevel against a piece of wood. And as you pull it back, you should be cutting almost at the tip. And you don't exactly have to have it round right here. Um, you're just going to remove some wood and some material and some small passes. And then after a while you can start to think about how round you want it and take corners off. So keep in mind that as we're pulling this across here, we're not actually cutting on the wing and we're not actually cutting on the tip. We're trying to ride that bevel and pull it around where it's almost to the tip and it's got this nice shearing cutting action right there. Just bring that around and shape it as you like. Then we're going to transition into something that's known as a push cut and it's going to give you a little bit cleaner cut and shear off the fibers as it goes. So I'm going to ride that bevel in there at the tip and we're going to transition over. I'm going to bring that up and bring it around and transition over into where we're pushing with the tip of the tool and the bevel is now behind our cut and we can bring that around and it shears off those fibers and gives you a nice smooth cut and it's almost to where you can do this 
where you don't have to sand at all if you get really good at it. I'm not quite there yet. Alright, so we'll bring that around and make some final passes with a push cut. Now I'm going to do a little sanding. So I'll put some sandpaper on a flexible pad and do it that way. And then by hand I'll move to some finer grits and get that sanded to where I want it. Now we're ready to take it off of our screw. And sometimes it helps to have a locking spindle so that you can grab it with both hands. It's on there pretty tight. We'll get it all the way off and then take that screw out of the chuck. And now we're ready to flip it around and mount that into the chuck so we can hollow it. Okay, make sure it's good and seated where you want it to. And tighten that down. Alright. Now we're going to move the tool rest around and set our bowl gouge so that the tip is at center. So the tool rest will be slightly below center so that our tip can be right at the center. When we start our cuts here, we're going to be moving from the center and taking little cuts towards the outside. The first thing we're going to want to do is make a cut with the wing of our ball gouge. And it's basically a, a scrape. And so we'll tip that and with the wing, bring that across, lightly across the face of our bowl. We're just going to keep doing that and making passes until that's completely trued up and take all the bumpiness and waviness out. So we've got a flat surface to start our cuts from. Now we'll start talking about how we're going to approach these cuts with our ball gouge. Just like we talked about before, if we imagine the flute pointing straight up, that's our 12 o'clock position, to the side is 3 o'clock. We also can call it open or all the way closed. Okay, so what we want to do in this is we'll start at the center and work our way out. We'll put our bowl gouge down in about the 2 o'clock position. Not completely closed and we'll start a cut. Hold the tool really strongly because it's going to want to skate out because there's nothing for that bevel to ride on at first. So we'll start that strongly and then we can ride that bevel around to the center. And We'll do that again. And we'll start a little more closed and then rotate it till it's a little bit more open. So we'll start maybe about the 2 o'clock position and then rotate that bevel till you're up about the 1 o'clock position as you come around and just keep that bevel on the piece of wood, start it, keep it on the piece of wood, and just follow it around. Just taking little bits at a time. Okay, and then we're going to have to start to think about the rim of our bowl. Because the thinner you get on a piece of wood, the more it vibrates. So I'm going to just make some plunging cuts with the bowl gouge closed, in that closed position, and work my way over to that rim and we're going to set our depth or wall thickness of our bowl and I'm just going to kind of drag that across scraping off that excess material and that's about the thickness that I want and I want to define that rim of the bowl before it gets too thin and starts to vibrate all over the place so then we'll go and continue to clear out more material start it strong open it up a little bit as you go down and make a nice even cut. Another thing to consider is think about like a tire spinning around. If you put a large tire on a vehicle at the same RPM that tire is going to be going around faster and a smaller tire is going to be going around slower at the same RPM. So think about that on our bowl. The outside of it is going just a little bit faster than the inside. So what that means is we're going to want to slow down our cut as we approach the center and give our tool time to cut that out. If we force it through there, um, things are going to start to rip and tear a little bit more. So a little faster on the outside and then slow down as we bring it to the center and just let the tool do all the work. So we'll just make a cut little by little and keep going as we approach that rim and then we'll just define that rim while there's still some wood behind it to back it up and make sure it doesn't vibrate as much. And I think a plain rim 
on a bowl is kind of boring sometimes so sometimes I'll bring them in a little bit this one I'm going to round um, this one's going to be used for food so it's nice to have some nice curves and rounded edges it'll make it easy to wash so we're going to rest that bevel on the piece of wood and just kind of rotate it around until we have some nice curves here on our rim and then we'll continue to hollow out a little bit more that looks good alright now we're going to just continue to make cuts and progressively work our way down through the bowl and eventually we'll get to where we remove that hole that we made for our woodworm screw and we'll go a little bit past that okay and then we'll just follow our wall thickness all the way down making some really light cuts and if you need to as you get to the bottom of the bowl it's a good idea to sharpen your tool for those last few passes and that's going to cut the wood just a little bit better and make it so you have a little bit less sanding to do and so as we get down here we're going to want to check our depth and make sure that we're not going to go through the bottom of the bowl and one way you can do that is put the tool in there and rest your thumb at the edge of the bowl and then bring it to the outside so you can see how deep. Now I've made this tool where I can slide a brass rod through this piece of wood and I'll just push it in there and then I can bring it to the top and I can see how deep I've gone and if I have any wood left and if there's any more that I have to remove. Now it looks like I have just a little bit more to remove so we're going to make a few final passes with a very sharp tool. So I'll bring that in and just lightly go over the edge. As I get in I'll cut a little bit deeper because I have to remove a little bit off of the bottom. And it's something like an eighth of an inch at this point. So we'll go down through and take your time on this part and feel often. See what your tool is doing and um, use your fingers to tell you if that's smooth or not and get down in there and sometimes you'll have little ridges that you want to take off and things like that just to make it nice and smooth before you start your sanding process because you don't want to have to do that all with sandpaper. So then I'll come in again and with a sanding pad and my drill I'll power sand the inside a little bit just to make it faster and then I'll hand sand down to about a 400 grit. And we'll do a little bit of that rim and then I'm going to finish it with some mineral oil. And this is the fun part where you actually get to see some color come out in the wood. And mineral oil is food safe. And I like to use that one. You just have to apply it and reapply it as you wash and go along. So we'll put some of that on. And then to give it a nice smooth protecting fill, I have a block of beeswax. And we're going to put some of that on as well. And I just rub that onto the wood and then I'll take a paper towel and I'll rub that beeswax over the surface of the wood and it kind of gets hot and melts a little bit and makes a nice satin finish. There we go. Our bowl's done. We just need to turn off that tenon or spigot that's on the bottom. And there's lots of different ways to do this. One way I like to do it is I have a waste block uh, that I put in my chuck that I've already mounted in there and you can use foam or I have a little cork pad that I like to just put on the end of it and then I'll place my bowl over that so that I don't mar up the inside and then I'll bring up the tailstock to that point that I made on it earlier and it should line up pretty well sometimes you have to do a little bit of adjusting and move it around a little bit and it's it's pretty good it doesn't have to be exactly perfect we're just going to have to make light cuts and cut off the tenon of our bowl so that we have a nice flat bottom for it to sit on okay and i'm using my spindle gouge for this but you can use your bowl gouge just as well and i'm going to come in and start cutting and like I said you have to make really light cuts and for some reason this bowl is getting more and more off off center as I turn and it's slipped a little bit and you'll see as it 
as I go more and more the bowl is going to start to wobble and wobble just a little bit more and I left this in just to show you that not everything's perfect and you're going to have to work out some problems so you can see that wobble really starting to happen now it's getting worse and worse and either I'm not tight enough or something's happened and the woods moved just a little bit so I stopped that and we're going to have to change what I do here and I start it up again and it's still wobbling just a little bit but I got it pretty centered I found out that my waste block wasn't completely centered anymore so I had to turn off the end of that and make it so that everything worked and now it's working fine I'm just gonna have to go a little bit up higher on the bowl and bring that curve around and then we're gonna make a, a flat bottom here and we'll get down really really close to our tailstock center and just get as close as we can so we don't have as much to cut off when we get all the way done uh, it just makes it a little bit easier if we can get down close okay and we'll just check that and make sure that that's flat on the bottom or even just a little bit concave so it doesn't rock back and forth okay and then we'll go ahead and I forgot to sand this first and I made a little groove so I'll stop that and we'll get the sanding done on that really quick so we'll go ahead and sand that and then I'm just going to take a handsaw and cut around until that's really thin and ready to pop off of there okay now what I'll do is just take my skew chisel and make sure my fingers are out of the way and just pop that nub off of there and then I'm going to just sand the bottom of my bowl with my power sander and that's one way to do it. You can always hand sand or carve it off of there or even use like a belt sander or something like that to sand with. Okay, that's good and flat and not rocking. And we're good to finish the bottom of that. So a little bit more mineral oil. And just brings out that shine and beauty of that cherry. And we've got a little bowl. I hope you had a lot of fun turning this bowl with me today. I sure had a lot of fun. One of the things I'm interested in is what is your favorite wood turning project that you've done? If you could put that in the comments for me, that'd be great. Please subscribe to my channel and also check out those links in the description. I'm going to go get me some food now. We'll see you soon.